Okay, so we'll do two to three worksheets today. And they're all about covalent bonding. The main thing is how to attempt the exam papers. That's the key thing. So if after this session, you're able to use the keywords and you're able to identify how to solve an MCQ or a regular question, then that is the goal today. Okay, so let's start started with this one. This is on covalent bonding, by the way. In order to form a compound with oxygen, an atom of group two element must. So, you know, this is group two element and this is group six. That's what matters. It does not matter whether it's oxygen or it's anything else in the group six. What matters is that it is in group six. So it has six electrons in the last shell. The other one has two. So obviously the two one goes to zero and the six one goes to eight. So they basically transfer electrons. How many? Two electrons. So group two element must transfer two electrons to oxygen. So A is correct. Which molecule contains three shared pairs of electrons? So best way to answer this is to draw the structure. Now remember I told you nine different structures that you should know. So all of these are from that. So let's see. So carbon dioxide is this one. So it has four bonds. C2H4. This is C2H4. So you can see that it has six bonds because every line shows one pair. So one, two, three, four, five, six. H2O. This is usually the common mistake that students do. Again, this is only two bonds, not three bonds or three shared pairs. So the last one is nitrogen, which is this. So yes, the answer is B. A molecule of sulfuric acid has the structure formula shown. What's interesting about sulfuric acid is that it does not follow octet rule. You know, we said that electrons in the last shell want to just be eight and all the bonds is to make it eight. Well, bigger atoms have other rules as well. So sulfur, for example, here, you can see that it has one, two, three, four, five, six bonds, which makes it sharing 12 electrons total. And that is unique to uh, big atoms, not small atoms like oxygen or carbon will never do that. So that's interesting. But let's see how many electrons are involved in forming all covalent bonds in the one molecule. So all we need to do is look at how many bonds there are. So six of sulfur and seven and eight. So there's eight bonds total. Which means 8 times 2, 16 electrons are involved in bonding. A covalent bond is formed by, now this is again something that we know that covalent bond is sharing of electrons usually between non-metals. Now, this again is the best option out of these. But this is a limited answer. We have seen examples where metals and non-metals share electrons. One example is aluminium trichloride. This is a compound where uh, aluminum metal is sharing electrons. So even though we know this to be true, out of these, this is the best option. So that's something that happens in the exam. They give you an answer, which is not true all the time, but it is the best option out of the ones that you have. Let's look at the next question. Which pair of elements, when combined together, do not form a covalent compound? So we know that generally metals and non-metals do not form covalent compound. Again, generally. And that means A is not a pair that will like prefer to make covalent bond. Cesium is a group one metal. Fluorine is a group seven metal. They're both really, really reactive because all they need is one electron lost from cesium and one electron gained by fluorine. So that's why the answer is A. The other three, they're all non-metals and they're from inner groups, which means they're likely to share electrons. Which diagram does not show the outer shell electron in the molecule correctly. So hydrogen and hydrogen, they have just one electron each. So this is correct. Now you might be like, no, wait a minute. They're not using different symbols. That's fine. The number of electrons should be this correct one. HCl, they have shared one pair and chlorine has six of its own shell, uh, six of its remaining ones, the lone pairs. So yeah, this is correct. Carbon has four, so one, two, three, four. Hydrogen has one. They're also sharing all that. This also seems correct. This one is wrong. And the reason for that is that chlorine has seven electrons in the last shell. So the left chlorine should show seven electrons here, total. So six on the outside and one that is being shared. Now, again, you notice that this does not use different symbols for two atoms. That is fine. The main point is that the outer shell electrons are correctly shown. Now, that does not mean that when you draw the diagram, you change that you should always try to use different symbols like this one or this one. Try not to use this as an example when you draw it. But if the examiner gives it, that's fine. Statements one, two, and three are about diamond and graphite. Number one, 
There are different solid forms of the same element. Yes, they are both carbon. So yes, this is true. They each conduct electricity. No, only graphite does conduct. Diamond does not. Three. They have atoms that form four equally strong bonds. This is only true for diamond. Graphite makes three strong bonds and one electron is weakly, uh, like it's kind of free. So that's why that's not part of a strong bond. There is some force of attraction with that, but it's not strong as that of the other bonds. One is correct. Two and three are wrong. So A is the answer. The diagram shows the structure of two forms, P and Q of a solid element. We can guess that this is carbon because this is the structure of graphite on the left side and this is the structure of diamond on the right side. Now, the reason I know this to be diamond and graphite is because they're from element. If they said that, oh, they're different compounds, I wouldn't know. Because while I know silicon dioxide has structure same as diamond, I don't know about anything that has same structure as graphite. But that's fine. It does not have anything to do with the question. What are suitable uses of P and Q based on their structure? Now, P has layers. Layers slide. They are soft. They make the thing soft. So this is used in lubrication. B or D is the answer. This one is hard. No layers, very rigid structure. This means it can be used in drilling. So we know this to be true, that B is the answer. The lead in pencil is made by a mixture of graphite and clay. Obviously, that's why it's so soft. Clay is added to make it harder, actually. If the percentage of graphite is increased, the per pencil slides across the paper more easily because there are more layers. It becomes more soft, and that's why. So why is this? It is because graphite is soft. But which option works with that? Uh, C. Now, notice that all the other three are also correct. Graphite does conduct electricity because it has free electrons for every atom. Graphite is a form of carbon. In fact, forms of elements are called allotropes. That's a word you should use. So diamond and graphite, they're both allotropes of carbon. What is an allotrope? Allotrope is same element, same state, different structure. So that's what this is. Okay, graphite is a non-metal. Okay, let's see. Graphite is a non-metal, yes. But again, that is not the reason why graphite makes the pencil slide more easily. The reason pencil slides more easily is C. So while the other options are true, only one is relevant. The following statement about chemical bonds. Chemical bonds are formed by... Oh, sorry. Covalent bonds are formed by sharing of electrons. It has to be one of these. Covalent substances have low electrical conductivity because we know that they don't have free electrons usually. And graphite is an exception to that, that you should know about. Carbonyl chloride. You have not seen this compound, but that doesn't matter. What you have seen is how electrons are shared, how diagrams are drawn. So examiner does do that. Carbonyl chloride has a structure shown below. Draw the diagram to show arrangement of outer electrons. The reason they're saying outer electrons means you don't need to show inner electrons in one molecule of carbonyl chloride. So first of all, what I'll do is I'll draw circles for each one of them. The way they have shown us. Okay, so done. Of course, everyone should have one pair. And then carbon needs to have, or if you start from the outside, this auction needs to have two bonds, but usne se fake banai, so we'll do one more. Another way to look at it, usne pe double bond banai hui. Now let's look at outer electrons. Oxygen had six. It has shared two. So we are left with four more. So one, two, three. Chlorine had seven. It's in group seven. So it has shared only one. So we should put the others here. Again, you can use cross or circle. Though both are fine. But the correct number should be there. And there you go. While many students try to put it like this, so many students do this, there is nothing wrong with it. Except when you put them in pairs, it's easier to count them. It's easier for examiner to know whether you have done it correctly or not. And secondly, in nature, you will study that electrons do try to be in pairs. So again, this is a better technique if you put them together as pairs. But if you scatter them around, that's also fine. I will re still recommend putting them in pairs. Explain why carbonyl chloride has a low melting point. 
रिमेम्बर दैट दिस इज कोवेलेंट कॉम्पाउंड एंड सिंपल कोवेलेंट वन एंड सिंपल कोवेलेंट में क्या होता है द फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज दे डिपेंड ऑन इंटरमोलिकुलर फोर्सेस सो इट इज लो मेल्टिंग पॉइंट बिकॉज इट हैज वीक इंटरमोलिकुलर फोर्सेस सो वी विल से दैट इट हैज वीक intermolecular forces of attraction now if it is a one mark question this is good enough but if it was a two mark question same question agar two marks ka hota then we will mention so less energy required to break them and that's fine so this is a one mark question so even if you wrote just the first part that will be correct electrolytes are liquids that conduct electricity now right now you don't know about electrolytes we will study it later but let's suppose you are a student in grade 9 you don't know what electrolytes are that's fine in the exam they do give you definitions of new words you should use that combine it with what you already know and then answer the question this is one of the assessment objectives of cies if you read your syllabus there is three assessment objectives so this is one of them that how do you deal with new information let's see electrolytes are liquids that conduct electricity do you think carbon chloride would be a good electrolyte when molten now here's the thing the real question is do you think that any way this thing could conduct electricity now why does anything conduct electricity because it has free electrons or free ions and what we need to know is does it have any of them what do you think does it have free electrons or ions it doesn't Ion. because, yeah it doesn't because the electrons are involved in bonding or they are part of the electron shell anyway no electrons are free and this thing as far as we understand does not form ions if it was water we will know that okay water when impure it forms ions but again that is when it is mixed pure water does not form ions pure water does not conduct electricity only impure water does so right now they are not asking if it is impure they are saying when it is molten I mean, when you melt it, will this thing conduct electricity? No, because there are no, because it has no free electrons. Again, notice that this is a two mark question, so you need to mention this for the first part and the reason for the second part. Now, if you write no free electrons or ions, that's also correct. But even if you write just free electrons, that's also fine. Graphite and diamond. are two allotropes of carbon define the term allotropes so i just told you that they are different structures in same state of same element what allotropes should you know about you should know about carbon that it has diamond and graphite you should also know that oxygen has o2 which is the oxygen that we breathe and o3 which is ozone so those are again allotropes one is o2 one is o3 both are gases both are oxygen but different structures and same for carbon carbon in fact has many more allotropes but these two are the ones that you should know about there are others as well and you can read about them in your book explain in terms of its structure why graphite is soft and good conductive electricity it is a three mark question you have to discuss in terms of structure they did not say bonding they just said structure which means we need to refer to the diagram of graphite that we have so diagram aapke zehn mein honi chahiye you should remember this diagram so let's look at it what is in the diagram there is layers and there's free electrons that are loosely bonded here so those are the two main things so we'll say that it has layers that slide and have weak forces between them so it is soft two things that i mentioned one layers and one the weak forces even if you don't mention the weak forces that's fine but layers and the sliding that's important let's look at the second part good conductive electricity it has free electrons so good conductor you can also mention that it has free electrons for every atom that's also fine so we have answered it हमने बॉन्डिंग की बात नहीं की बिकॉज द क्वेश्चन डिड नॉट वॉन्ट अस टू टॉक अबाउट बॉन्डिंग द क्वेश्चन रिक्वायर्ड स्ट्रक्चर वी डिस्कस स्ट्रक्चर स्टेट टू यूज नाउ द की वर्ड हेयर कमांड वर्ड इज स्टेट विच मीन्स यू डोंट नीड टू गिव एनी रीजन हेयर द कमांड वर्ड वॉज एक्सप्लेन विच मीन्स यू नीडेड टू गिव रीजन 
but here you don't. So graphite will depend on the above properties. Let's see. It is soft. So use is that it can be used as a lubricant. It's a good conductive electricity. So the use is that it can be used as electrode. So the reason is given. You just need to mention where you can use it. Predict two physical properties of diamond that are different from graphite. So one, we know that it is hard. And second, we know that it's a bad conductor. Now, many students sometimes write that it has higher melting point. Graphite also has high melting point. So that's while the number, the melting point itself, the value is different. The property is still the same that they both have high melting point. So it's not a different physical property. The physical properties are that one is hard, the other is soft. And diamond is a bad conductor while graphite is a good conductor.